Now we are. Oh, just give me a second. How's that sound? It sounded foamy. You are listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of well, the second worst marathon ever. With me, as always, is... Rich Outfield. You were supposed to, like, jump in and be all like, Rich Outfield, hi, everybody, I'm here. Oh, I thought you'd forgotten your cue. who I was. No, no, that was your cue. I was letting you take over. I didn't want to, like, rob you of your voice and speak for you because that's... Something I would do, too. <laughs> I have all of Big's lines revoiced. <laughs> the day is new, folks. We recorded until three hours of the morning. And then uh, we just didn't have any more energy. And so here it is the next day, still here in the cabin, still doing the marathon, the second worst of all yes. marathons. That's right. And We've made it to rule number 11. Putting it on paper lets you start fixing it. If it stays in your head, a perfect idea, you'll never share it with anyone. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I don't know how to apply this to the Pixar movies, but certainly we can apply it to a certain Senor Big Anchorage. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just saying before we started recording, these rules, a lot of them have uh, the, have corollaries to those Heinlein rules that we've mentioned in the past. And yeah, rule number one was, you must write. Which is, yeah, a pretty obvious rule. But how many times have you met somebody who's like, oh, I've got a great idea for a book or a movie or whatever. And you're like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. I'll, you want, I'll read it if you want. Oh, no, no. I've just, I've got it all in my head. I, I haven't, I haven't written it. I, yeah, I meet that guy every morning when I go to the bathroom and see him in the mirror. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, then you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely, I think, an important rule. I don't know that there's tons to say about it pretty straightforward but yeah i mean you can polish and polish that gem in your head but uh, it's not a real gem until you take it out of your head and put it on the paper then it becomes a diamond ring that you can wear around and show off to all your girlfriends you know if you liked it then you should have put a ring on it <laughs> there you go the, the, I bet you never thought that Beyonce song would apply to writing. <laughs> it doesn't. The thing with that is why? Why? I mean, you've, you've got a great idea. The one that you can't wait to share. In fact, if it's somebody like you, you tell your stories to people all the time, over and over again. Why is it so much harder to make it shareable on paper? Are you just a better oral storyteller? I am really good at oral. Your brother did tell me that one time. I, it was very late at night. I don't know. Maybe it's because that's the final product, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe that's when you're... It's not just, hey, yeah, I'm thinking about doing this, and this is what I was thinking it should be about, and this, this, and this. Which is fun to tell little stories. There's no effort involved. I mean, a fi there's not a finality to it. There's not a, okay, this is... I have to write it and it has to be good. Although, with this rule, she says putting it on paper lets you start fixing it. But, but, but that implies that there was something broken. Okay. Well, I guess. I think it re implies that it it's just an idea, not a finished product kind of a thing. So you put the idea down. Then you can start rejiggering it. Hey, now. Until it's uh, something good. I guess that's what she's trying to say. Okay, well, how, I mean, it's very obvious how we can apply this to our own writing. But, yeah. Uh, and it applies to all 15 of those Pixar movies, too. <laughs> <laughs> it probably also applies to the other... 10, 15 Pixar movies that have never been made. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. though. <laughs> Does it apply to Newt? <laughs> I would assume so. They didn't start fixing it. Do you think Newt went the way of the dinosaur because of that Rio movie? It did, yeah. They went, oh, crap, that's the same idea that we had. We can't just put out the same movie, but with Newt's. It's a shame, but well, there's no chance it was the same movie. Right, 
but and just the same premise. I always hope that they'll give Newt a chance again someday in the future because I, I wanted to see it and I still want to see it. Uh, yeah. And I had never any interest in seeing Rio. Yeah. I hope they give Newt a, tea a chance sometime. <clears throat> Anyways, all right. I think that brings us to the end of this That's episode. Right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. See ya. Good night. That Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. At the Steve, we pay our authors as well as our own bills for the website maintenance and the like, so if you're ever in a generous mood, or even if you're not, we'd love it if you donate. Just press the button on the website to donate $5 a month, a quarter, or choose your own one-time donation amount.